Hey everybody, welcome to the Apple Watch user guide and tutorial. This is part 4 of 4, where we're going to briefly talk about some of the apps that ship with Apple Watch, how to get third-party watch apps with some app recommendations, and answer some popular miscellaneous Apple Watch questions. Stay tuned to the end of the video to learn more about what we cover in the first three parts. Now let's get to it. Let's go over what I think are some of the best apps that ship with the Apple Watch. First, I'd like to point out that the Apple Watch is a great fitness tracker. It comes with the built-in workout app that lets you track your workout progress with special modes for every exercise type for various cardio activities such as running, walking, using the elliptical trainer, Stairmaster, and many more. There's even a swimming fitness tracker for Series 2 and 3. If you're like me and found that there wasn't a weightlifting or a strength training tracker, you can actually add it. Just use the other option, and at the end of the workout, there's an option to name the workout. Use the strength training name and it will now appear as an option moving forward for you. You can track your results on your iPhone using the Activity app and check them daily using the Activity Complication on your Apple Watch. With the Activity app on your Apple Watch, you can track how much you move, exercise, and stand from day to day. I'll leave a link to the Apple support page on the Activity app in the description below so you can learn more. Another app that comes with the Apple Watch that I use a lot would be Apple Wallet for Apple Pay. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to learn how to set that up, but it's basically an extension of Apple Pay on iPhone that lets you pay for things and use your loyalty cards with Apple Watch the same as you would for iPhone. I also find I use the Apple Watch Timer app at least once a week, usually for laundry as it works really well with Siri. If you have Hey Siri set up on your Apple Watch, then you can just lift your wrist and start by saying Hey Siri, and then specify the details of the timer, like set a timer for 27 minutes. If not, then you can press and hold the home button to activate Siri as well. The timer app can be used manually, but I find it so much easier to use with Siri. There are some great third-party apps for the Apple Watch. One that was brought to my attention recently was Dial Calc, which I think has the best interface for a calculator on the Apple Watch, as I found most calculators are difficult to use on the watch since the display is so small. But this one has a unique interface that makes simple math really easy on the Apple Watch. I'll leave a link for it in the description below if you'd like to check that out. There are some other third-party Apple Watch apps I think are great as well, such as the Starbucks and Weather Network apps. I've talked about these in a previous video, Best Apps for Apple Watch. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out as well. If you'd like to explore and look through all the apps that are available for Apple Watch on the App Store, you can use the Watch app on your iPhone and tap the App Store tab. This will give you a special version of the App Store that only displays apps that have an Apple Watch app extension. I like to take a look there every so often just to see what's new. Now I'm going to go through some of what I find are the more common questions I get asked about the Apple Watch. Can't you take phone calls on any Apple Watch? How is Series 3 offering this as a new feature? I found there to be a bit of confusion around the topic of phone calls, texts, and Apple Watch in general, so I'd like to clarify. Every Apple Watch can send and receive telephone calls and text messages, but must be in Bluetooth range of your iPhone. As it does this over Bluetooth, and the watch essentially acts as a Bluetooth telephone accessory, like a Bluetooth telephone earpiece. It will use the mic and speaker on your Apple Watch. However, the watch must be connected to the iPhone for this to work. If either is in airplane mode or too far apart, this feature will not work. The Apple Watch Series 3 with cellular or LTE model has a built-in cellular transmitter and antenna with a special eSIM that allows you to send and receive telephone calls and text messages independently of your iPhone, while still using the same telephone number. One important caveat is that your mobile phone provider must support this feature and will likely charge you a monthly fee for it. If I don't own an iPhone, but I own an iPad, will I be able to use all functions of the Apple Watch? The short answer is no, but for a longer explanation, the Apple Watch pairs with your iPhone. The iPad doesn't have the software required to set up an Apple Watch, specifically the Watch app. You must have an iPhone 5 or newer to use an Apple Watch. I see different versions of Apple Watch like Sport Aluminum, Stainless Steel, Nike, and Edition. What's the difference? Which one should I get? So there are different editions and versions of the Apple Watch, such as the Aluminum or Sport version, Stainless Steel, Nike, and addition. The main differences are the watch bands and the materials the watch case is made out of. As long as they're the same series, all of the internal components, such as the processor and display, are the same. The base model or sports model case is made out of aluminum and comes with a sports strap usually. The stainless steel version is made out of a nice polished stainless steel and either comes with a dressier watch band or a sport band, usually. The Nike version is an aluminum case model with a specialized Nike sports strap 
that's perforated so it can breathe a bit better when you're being athletic. There's a special Hermes model that's the polished stainless steel model with a Hermes band that are very dressy. And finally, there's the Apple Watch Edition that is currently made out of ceramic and comes with a sport band and the nice looking pillow charger that Apple makes. As I said, as long as they're all the same series, the internals are mostly the same. But now with Series 3, there is a difference of whether or not you get the cellular or LTE version. But that option is available on all models of the Apple Watch. As for which one you should get, that's really open for debate. But my opinion is that it depends on your budget, needs, and which type of band tickles your fancy, so to speak. I personally bought mine when the Series 2 came out, and I bought an aluminum Series 1, as the extra benefits of the Series 2 I didn't really need and it saved me a bit of money. Plus I'm pretty active and have been told by some that the stainless steel version can scratch easily if you're not careful. I bought the silver aluminum with the white band, but as you can see in my videos, you can always buy different watch bands. Those were some of the more popular questions I get asked about Apple Watch. If you have one, please feel free to ask in the comments below. If there's enough of them, I might even make an Apple Watch Q&A video. As I said earlier, this is part 4 of 4 of my Apple Watch user guide and tutorial. Check out parts 1 to 3 where I go over the Apple Watch basics, how to essentially personalize the Apple Watch, and finally go over the Apple Watch's control center and settings. I'll leave links in the description below if you'd like to check those out. If you think I should do a more in-depth video on any Apple Watch apps or topics, please let me know in the comments below. If enough people ask for something, I can make a video about it. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.